Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 84, and this is what our diggers have for us today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have a team dig from Jim and Dick DeYoung, who've dug up DOS games backslash arcade 3 backslash super yacht. Not entirely certain what to expect here. Super something. We've got a 4 kilobyte text file. Well, let's just try running it. Super Yacht by George Lurit. Lur Lurite? Lur I'm not sure. <laughs> Copyright 1989 Soft Disk, published on Big Blue Disk 34. Huh. So this might technically not be legal to be on here, because I'm pretty sure the Big Blue Disk stuff, I don't know if it was ever, like, made shareware or anything. Like, here's the thing, is that Big Blue Disk was a sort of subscription-based thing where you'd get software every month, or every two months. I forget what the what the intervals were. But you get software on disk, and you actually paid for that. Like, it even has a subscriptions number right there. So, I don't think including this on this CD would have been legal at this point in time. I think the software is legal now to distribute, but I'm, again, I'm not 100% certain on that, because I'm not actually that knowledgeable about the big blue disk stuff. But in any case, um, player selection. Enter no name when finished to let computer play. Enter name we get beginning with comp. Okay, so... I'll enter my name. Uh, we'll enter comp uh, comp one. Uh, I don't know. We'll just do. We'll now roll dice. I got a funny feeling this is Yahtzee, but let's see. Well, the fact that it's rolling five dice is a good sign. Yep, this is definitely Yahtzee. Okay, so let's see how this particular form works. Oh, that's actually really interesting. It's actually showing you on the side what, how many points you're going to get with the current roll based on which of those you select. And then you can decide to re-roll specific dice. Okay. Press the number of each die to re-roll. And yeah, I can choose which ones I want to re-roll. So yeah, we already have a... Oh, there's no um, selection at the side for a small straight, only just a full straight. I'm straight flush? What? How does that... Oh. It's not red because it's recommending dice to remove. It's red because the dice literally do have different colors on them. That's kind of interesting. Huh. Well, let's see what happens here. Oh, I can actually still re-roll? Uh... Okay, so you're allowed to re-roll twice. Interesting. So I guess in this case, none of this is pretty good, so... I'll just put it into the choice column. Is okay to score this here? Sure. And the computer just got a full house? What? Really? So this isn't exactly like Yahtzee because of the different coloring with the dice that can happen. Um, oh, well, take a look at this. There's the, um, the dice don't always show up in this same orientation either. You got the six up, the two sixes are a different orientation, so is the two, um, the two threes. Well, that's, uh, actually, let's see if we can get that full, full house. Nope. Uh, I'll we'll just put this in the threes. Oh, he's already got a flush, so he's just going to go right for that. And that's already a full house, so I don't need to re-roll that one. Well, now that i got a couple sixes up, let's act... Well, no, let's keep trying for the fours. Oh, whoops, I meant to... <laughs> I meant to re-roll the... Whoops. Okay, then. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to put that into fours. So one thing that sometimes um, mixes me up with these games is that they always have different mechanics as to whether you're selecting dice or cards to hold versus re-roll or redraw. 
So I accidentally picked the two that I wanted to re-roll as opposed to the two that... Or the two that I wanted to keep as opposed to the two as the ones I wanted to re-roll. It's weird like that. And that, that trips you up when you switch between games like this all the time. Um, ooh, I've got three... Well, I've got a full house again, but I don't need a full house. Let's actually try for... Ah, I didn't mean to... I did it again! I picked the ones that I meant to keep instead of the ones that I meant to re-roll. Urgh. Okay, this time, keep the sixes. Keep the sixes again. Okay, there. So you can either put that into sixes or four of a kind. So we'll do four of a kind. Uh, not that one. I accidentally pushed F instead of G. There we go. Kind of glad that it lets me re reselect that. And I'm already starting with three sixes, so I may want to try going for the for the yacht, as it were. <laughs> as opposed to Yahtzee. Nope, that's going to be full zeros there. Oh, hey, I got the flush. Okay. So, I just need to get that straight. If I can get that straight, then I'll win. Uh, oh, no, wait, he already has his flush filled in, so... Okay, he still needs four of a kind. I still need a straight. So, I think... I'm not sure whose odds are going to be better here. But that was a terrible roll. And I did that mistake again. I... Oh, well, so he's going to win this. Even if he doesn't get his four of a kind. So, yeah. So I can either continue playing or enter to end series. So, yeah, that was Super Yacht, which was part of the Big Blue Disc games. Um, again, I have no idea what the legality of those particular of that particular software was by this point in time when this CD would have came out with all these shareware games on it. And I'm also not entirely certain what the legality of it is now even. But in any case, it's actually a pretty decent game. It's very weird playing, playing it in such a way where, like, I mean, the dice have different colors that can show up at random. But there doesn't seem to be... Like, I mean, if you wanted to make a real version of this, you would somehow need a 24-sided die. And I don't know if that's physically possible. Like, maybe it is. I know 20-sided is possible, and I'm, I think 30-sided is possible, too. I don't know about 24. But in any case, it's not a bad game. Next up, Captain Crazy Hat's dug up win games backslash unclassified backslash win fight. I would almost say that this is going to be some kind of fighting game of some sort, except it's in the unclassified folder, so that kind of has me worried. Um, well, we do have some sound effects and a text file. Artematica Funny Desktop Presents Wind Fight, version 0.8, February 8th, 1993. Condition on use. Okay, we're starting things off like this. This version of Wind Fight may be freely copied and distributed in unmodified form, may not be sold. Okay, so... We've got a freeware program here. Need an audio card capable of playing WAV files. My desk is making squeaking noises. <laughs> uh, Windfight will equally run without it, but you'll hear nothing. So let's see here. Windfight lets you compete in a Far West style with. Let, uh, let me. <laughs> okay, let me read this how it actually reads. Windfight let you compete in a Far West style with a bad guy engaging a gunfight with him. Wow, that's bad English. <laughs> To engage a fight with the bad guy, select Fight Now from the game menu, or press F2 key. To win a fight with the bad guy, shoot him by clicking with the left mouse button. To end a fight, press the right mouse button. Hmm. So I'm not entirely certain what we've got here. I mean, it seems like it's going to be a game of some sort. And it's already giving me um, <laughs> flashbacks to the other games that we were playing. Like this. Like, so far we just got this tiny little window here. So... Y so we got Drunk Doc, G Young Gunman, <laughs> Young Gunman, Bounty Killer, or Wyatt Earp. Of course. Bro. So... Whoops, I accidentally right-clicked. Bro. So it actually plays on the desktop. 
That's kind of interesting. Uh, you can give me another guy to fight? I don't get it. Okay, yeah, this is why the English isn't that so good. This guy who made this is in Italy. So that probably explains a few things. Not a lot of Italian games came out here in North America very, during this time, but that's one of the interesting things about this shareware CD, is that it's pulling stuff from virtually everywhere. Bro. So, did I lose? Did I lose? Interesting. Bro. See, so the way it seems to work is that you pretty much have to press, or there's a timed fight option here. I wonder what that means. I'm guessing that now he's just going to pop up at random or something. So I guess this is why it ended up in the cla unclassified folder, is because it's something that you can sort of leave running in the background. And then every so often it'll pop someone up on the screen, I'm guessing. Now you have to fight them. I'm just going to move around to random stuff here and see if that actually happens. Yeah, I don't think the timed fight is doing anything, because nothing is happening. So let's try the different level settings here. Bro. Okay, that was still easy. Let's do Bounty Killer. Fight Bro. now. Rather good. Wyatt Earp. Fight Bro. now. Not too bad. So yeah, it's basically, you just it makes guys appear and you shoot them. It looks like there's supposed to be a timed mode, but I don't know if it's like working properly or how often it would happen. Yeah, timed fight is supposed to make it show up at random, but I guess it's a very low random chance or something. Okay, and the level, from what I was reading there, determines how close the mouse cursor it is. So if I start Bro. one right now, he's like right there. Bro. And another, he's right there. But now if I set the level all the way to Wyatt Earp, Bro. he's all the way over here. Bro. Well, that's actually kind of interesting. You actually get some gunshot effects there, so you can like rapidly push the button. Bro. But, of course, it's actually being pixel accurate about it from the looks of it, Bro. too. Because, yeah, take a look at where that shot is compared to the sprite of the gunman there. There's definitely Bro. some pixel accuracy going on here. So, yeah, that's Windfight. Very basic program. Bro. A little desktop thing. Bro. It's nothing special. Bro. But it was free, and at least I think it was free, right? Yeah, it doesn't seem like the guy's charging money for it. Yeah, nothing special, but it is kind of neat, This Bro. how it has the sound effects and everything. And I do like that the sound Bro. effects are not obnoxious, either. <laughs> I mean, stuff like this. Sometimes the sounds you just never want to listen to. So, yeah, I don't really have much more to say about this thing. Except that I kind of wish it kept score. And to finish things off today, Jonathan Gosselin's dug up win games backslash comp backslash cows. Now, we already had one experience with a program called Cows or something like that, so I'm hoping this is something totally different. But we're going to see in a second here. Oh, this isn't even a game. <laughs> this is a screensaver. Well, let's see what it, how it works. Use this dialog box to change the settings for the cow screensaver. Cow screensaver, choose one of... Okay, well... I don't know if Windows has an easy way of doing this, but let's see here. Okay, here we go. So, cows. Setup. Cow screensaver. Send $3 registration for diversified computer services <laughs> in California. Okay, so cow frequency. So we can have them rare or continuously. <laughs> Let's just do very often. Cow's flying speed. Hmm. I guess we'll just leave it as slow. Sound on, clear screen. Okay, let's test it. <laughs> uh... Is that it? <laughs> well, there goes the chicken. Okay, let me change this so that it's continuous so that we can see more of what this screensaver actually does. So let's see what happens here. Well, Moody, you too. <laughs> and there's the one lying back again. If this is all that this thing does, then this is hardly cons could be considered a screensaver. Oh, that chicken actually got by without his balloon going. Oh, it actually does blank the screen after a little. 
even though I didn't tell it to. So, at least there's that, but like, I mean, oh, what? <laughs> okay, so there are a few that haven't shown up yet. It doesn't seem to be pretty random. Well, aren't you going to show any others now? So yeah, this seems to be all it is, is just these cows that come across and moo, or blow raspberries at you, or sometimes a chicken with a balloon that'll sometimes <laughs> pop and it goes down, or sometimes not, and it just flies across on its merry way. So, yeah, it's like, would anyone want to pay $3 for this is a good question. Um... Well, let's think about this realistically for a second here. This came out... Oh, there he goes again. This came out for Windows 3.1. So... Like, here's the thing. A lot of people weren't very good at writing Windows 3.1 software. So, you didn't have a lot of options. So, something like this, <laughs> is it worth $3 back when it was brand new? Like, maybe, but then why would anybody want this is the better question. And again, this doesn't serve as a very good screensaver because of just the nature of what's going on here. These characters that are moving across the screen are eventually going to be burned into the phosphors anyways, just from repeating. So, not the greatest screensaver in terms of saving the screen, and then not too var varied in what it's doing, and then it's probably going to be making noise the whole time, so good luck using this in a work environment. Yeah, I don't know. This is probably not $3 software, <laughs> but oh well, we get a laugh out of it for the show here. Bro. 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 Bro.